Hello, in this lecture we'll move from the um, single particle description that we've uh, treated in the previous lectures to multiple particles. And uh, we'll start off with treating independent particles and then move on to a more general case where those different particles can interact with each other. To be able to describe this though, um, we'll need to introduce some mathematics, in particular the tensor product of vector spaces. And uh, this is something that will appear familiar um, since we've treated this in one of the homework assignments, I think the first homework assignment where we treated um, the uh, quantum information gates, the C0 gate, for example. So um, we'll look at individual particles that are described by, um, by, by quantum states phi in an, in an individual Hilbert space H1. We'll move to uh, multiple particles, in this case two particles, that are described by a larger Hilbert space that is H1 tensor product with H2. So let's look at systems where those states are independent um, and we'll introduce the tensor product of a state phi in H1 with dimension capital N and a state chi in H2, Hilbert space two, with dimension M. So a priori, these two vector spaces, these two Hilbert spaces don't have to have the same dimensions. So if we take a phi in H1 and a chi in H2, we can write the tensor product of phi and chi, or phi and chi as, uh, as one state in this um, tensor product of the vector spaces, which will have a dimension of n and m. So if we now, um, so, so this is all still a, a relatively abstract definition, um, but we can see how a tensor product of the states or of the, the elements in the Hilbert space will be a member of this tensor product between the two Hilbert spaces. So something to keep in mind is that we will introduce the tensor product of the vector spaces H1 and H2, um, which increases the vector space or the Hilbert space that we're working in. We'll introduce the tensor product of two elements of those vector spaces. Um, and then uh, we'll also introduce the tensor product of operators that operate on H1 and H2 um, respectively. And that will form a tensor product um, which, which will be an operator in its own right with a, which operates on the tensor product of the two um, vector spaces. So uh, um, I'll be a little bit sloppy in, in the terminology here and refer to the tensor product as something that could mean either of those three things. So now that we've introduced the tensor product of two states in each of those respective um, Hilbert spaces, we can look at this in a basis. So if we have a basis of states n in uh, H1, and we have a basis of states m in H2, we can write phi in terms of the basis in H1 and chi in terms of the basis of in um, H2. And then we can write the, um, the vector, uh, the, the tensor product of phi and chi, so the state that is the tensor product of those two states, phi and chi, in terms of um, the basis vectors of H1 and H2, of the tensor product of H1 and H2, and those basis vectors will be um, the tensor product of the basis vectors N and M. So we'll have um, N times M independent basis vectors, so this becomes an N times M dimensional space, um, and of course the the usual orthonormality or orthogonality relationships um, apply. So n prime tensor product with m prime, scalar product with n tensor product with m um, will give us these two Kronecker deltas. So the tensor product, um, it should not surprise you, is also linear. So if I have um, a, uh, an element of my H1 space and I um, take the tensor product with an element with a linear combination of elements in the H2 space and I'll get a, a, the same linear combination of tensor products and the same thing is true if I take my um, linear combination in the H1 side. Um, moreover, this tensor product is, is a properly defined quantity for, um, for our vector space. It's independent of the particular choice of basis that we choose. So if we were to apply a unitary basis transformation um, from our basis n in H1 um, to our basis i, and we'll apply a, a similar transformation from our basis m to our basis j in H2. Um, all of those are, of course, going to be unitary transformations, so R, um, R dagger R will be equal to an identity, and S dagger S will be equal to an identity. So then we can introduce the tensor product of our basis 
factors or new basis factors will be which will be related to our old basis factors multiplied with r and s um, and we can again come up with a, um, a, a unitarity description for r and s now the the tensor product of those two unitary operations but we'll introduce the tensor product of operators later um, and we can write our state phi in this new basis so we'll have a c primes and a c de c bar and d bar coefficients that describe us in this new basis and we can show um, and i'll leave this up uh, up to a homework assignment um, or, or for your own edification um, to do this so we can show that uh, um, if we look at our tensor product phi and chi in either of those two bases that these are actually identical so um the tensor product, in other words, is something that does not depend on the particular basis we're working on, as it shouldn't, um, and so it's a useful thing to, uh, to consider in how we describe physical states. Now, we started here by introducing those physical states as independent quantum systems. So, um, I can uh, introduce these, the, 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 the tensor product um, through the two existing elements phi and chi of, our, of the two spaces that I take the tensor product of. Um, but the, the tensor product of two Hilbert spaces is actually much larger than just the elements that one can get by taking the tensor product of two elements in H1 and H2. In other words, there are states, capital phi, in this tensor product, in this larger Hilbert space of dimension n times m, which cannot be written as the tensor product of individual um, st states in the individual spaces. And those will be the quantum systems that are interacting. So in interacting quantum systems, we will use those states um, that are part of the space of states that is given by the tensor product of the, the space of states for each of, of the individual quantum systems. And um, we will not just obtain trivial um, uh, the trivial states that are obtained by a tensor product of two individual um, elements from the subspaces, but we will obtain actually uh, states that cannot be described using uh, the tensor product of those states. So in general, in other words, we can write our state phi as uh, a, a set of n times m independent coefficients b and m um, in the basis for this Hilbert space H1 uh, cross H2, um, and that's more general, of course, these n times n, um, n times m coefficients are more general than the n plus m cn times dm coefficients. So if we were to just write this as a tensor product, then the only thing we can use are the cn or the n coefficients in the first vector space, the m coefficients in the second vector space, um, and so that will give us uh, a lot less freedom than uh, a more general expression. If we can write a state, a quantum state for this, these two quantum systems that are interacting, if we can write this not as, an, as a tensor product of individual states, then we will call this state phi an entangled state. Okay. So uh, um, in, in the other cases, they will just be independent, non-interacting quantum systems. So there's nothing there that would lead us to think about entanglement. But if those states cannot be written, if the state in the, in the two quantum system Hilbert space cannot be written as a direct tensor product between two states in the individual quantum system spaces, then it is an entangled state. So this much about um, the tensor product of states and the tensor product of, uh, um, of, of vector spaces, of Hilbert spaces. The only thing we still need to introduce is the tensor product of operators. So naturally, if there is, um, uh, if we're talking about new spaces, there will be a way to, to write operators operating on those spaces, um, on that larger Hilbert space. So we take, we define the tensor product of the operator A and B as a new operator C. This operator C will, of course, work on this n times m dimensional um, uh, Hilbert space. That's the tensor product of the original Hilbert spaces. And that's defined such that um, the tensor product of A and B on a tensor product of two states is equal to the tensor product, uh, the, the operator A operating on the first um, subspace and then the um, operator B operating on the, the state in the second um, space. So if we can, if we again 
go to a, a basis for this. We can write our matrix elements or we can write our uh, matrix representation A, N prime N and B, M prime M in the second space. So that's in a basis N and M for H1 and H2. And with that, we can construct the um, matrix element description of our operator C or our operator A tensor product with B. Um, and that will have uh, an expression that, uh, that looks like this, A, um, N prime N and, and multiplied with B, M prime M. In general, however, again, um, the matrix elements um, or the matrix representation of a general operator C will be wider, will be broader, will have more freedom than just the tensor product of two operators A and B. Um, and so there will be operators again where this C um, N prime N, M prime M cannot be written as A N prime N and B times B M prime M. So those are of course going to be again interesting operators to look at because they extend um, the, the description of what we would be able to do in, in the individual quantum systems. Um, there's some special cases. So of course, if we have a, an operator A that works on H1 um, and we take a tensor product with the unit operator in tensor space two, uh, in uh, Hilbert space two, um, that will effectively just have uh, the operator A work on the um, or on tensor products as defined here, um, it will have the operator A work on phi, and if phi is an eigenvector, then we'll just get an eigenvector for, um, uh, we'll, we'll find that um, an, an eigenvalue A, um, and that this tensor product state is also an eigenvector of the tensor product of A with uh, identity matrix. We could write something similar for, um, for chi if we uh, revert that notation. Um, Notation-wise, carrying these uh, um, this tensor product uh, um, signs will be a little bit cumbersome, so we'll often just write phi chi when we meet when we mean the tensor product between phi and chi. And similarly, we'll use a b um, when we mean the tensor product between a and b. And so, lastly, I just want to um, show how this works on uh, the example for a spin one half system. So if we now take two particles that are each in a spin one half system. So N and M are both equal to two. The dimension of H1 and H2 is in both cases two. So the dimension of the tensor product between those two spaces will be equal to, uh, to M times N or, or four, okay? So that makes sense. If we look at the, the basis that we would form between H1 and H2, um, we'll construct it the way we did before by taking the tensor products between the basis factors in H1 and in H2, and I've added a little subscripts here to indicate where the plus and the minus comes from, but as you can see, I dropped them right away anyway. Um, so that gives us our four basis factors, plus, 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 minus, minus, plus, and minus, minus, where the first symbol is in H1, and the second symbol refers to H2, or in other words, that refers, the first symbol plus refers to the, um, the, the spin in uh, of the first particle and the next symbol refers to the spin of the second particle. So um, if we introduce epsilon one, which can be plus or minus one and epsilon two, which can be plus or minus two, then we can look at two operators. So um, S one um, in the Z direction, that's the spin projection in the Z direction for the first particle. And we can look at the spin projection in the Z direction of the second particle. And so if we apply that to any state epsilon one epsilon two, then for S one Z, we find epsilon one times H bar over two. For S two Z, we find epsilon two times H bar over two as eigenvalues. If we now look at the tensor product of S one Z and S two Z, then we'll, then we'll find epsilon one um, times epsilon two H bar squared over four. So just the product of the eigenvalues for S one and S two. Um, now to point out explicitly that there are states that do not, that one cannot write just as the tensor product of, um, of a state in H1 and a state in H2. Let's look at a general state phi, which can be lambda one times the plus one state um, plus mu one times the minus one state. So this is a linear combination in our H1 basis. And we can do the same thing for chi, which is now a linear combination in our H2 basis with lambda two and mu two as parameters. Um, naturally, there's 
a normalization requirement of lambda one and lambda two, as well as on lambda two and lambda uh, and and mu two. So um, the the states phi and chi are of course normalized. If we now write the um, the, the the tensor product between phi and chi, then we'll find um, lambda one, lambda two with the plus plus state, lambda one, mu two, and so on. We'll find the coefficients in the form that is written there. In particular, if we look at the structure of these coefficients, the product of the first one and the last one will be lambda one, lambda two, mu one, mu two. And that's the same as the product of the, um, the second and the third combination here. So that's the relationship between the, the coefficients that will have to be satisfied um, for this tensor product. In general, though, we can write any phi in our four-dimensional um, tensor space or, or in our four-dimensional tensor product of the two-dimensional vector spaces and that will have completely independent alpha, beta, gamma and delta coefficients without this connection um, that's required for the tensor product where alpha times delta has to be equal to beta times gamma. So there are indeed even in the simple example there are um, there are many states phi capital phi that you can write which cannot be written as a tensor uh, as a tensor product of two space uh, of two states in the individual subspaces okay so um we'll take this concept of tensor products um a, quite a step further in the next lecture when we introduce an entirely new way of looking at at physical states that moves beyond um what we've what we've worked with um before uh, so we'll move beyond uh, looking at individual states as, as vectors in a Hilbert space, but we'll generalize that concept to allow for missing information and to allow for um, the presence of, of these subspaces that we may not have information or no access to.